So I've talked about a couple of ways that we could estimate alpha. We could work with um, a log log plot and do a linear fit of the histogram of p of x. We could do the cumulative distribution function, capital P of x, or we could use this maximum likelihood estimator. How does it work? So what I want to do now is present results again from the um, Closet Chalizi and Newman paper. This is table two from that. And what they did was they generated artificial data for alpha equals 2.5. And they did that for both continuous and the discrete case. And um, oh, I should mention that this result is the result for continuous uh, uh, variable x. So where x can take on any value between x min and infinity. If it's discrete, the formula isn't anywhere near as nice. OK, so they generated artificial data. Um, I forget how many, 10,000 data points for a discrete power law and a continuous power law. And then they tried out various, various statistical methods. And here are their results. So again, this is table 2 from their paper, and they discuss these results much more fully there. And uh, the main thing to note, so the results in bold are the ones that are um, accurate. So MLE is maximum likelihood estimator. So for the continuous case, that's the one I've been describing, if, they, um, if you have continuous data and you estimate the alpha with the appropriate formula for a uh, continuous distribution, you get 2.50 plus or minus 0.02. And that's consistent with the true value. So this here, which is in bold, I'll circle in orange just to make it even clearer, this is an accurate result. Um, the only other accurate result here is if you do, if you have a, a, a discrete power law and you use the discrete MLE formula, you get, or they get, 2.49 plus or minus 0.02. Again, consistent with the true value. So the maximum likelihood estimator um, for the appropriate type of distribution gives an accurate estimate of alpha with 10,000 data points. Um, now let's look at um, some of these other methods. So LS, that's an abbreviation for least squares, the sort of standard approach to fitting a line to data. So if we do least squares with the probability density function, lowercase p of x, with um, standard width, uh, constant width histograms, one gets, depending on the discrete or continuous case, 1.5 or about 1.4, which is a dreadful result because the true value is 2.5. By the way, and there are a lot of papers that do exactly this. So those papers should certainly be treated skeptically. Um, if one uses the continuous, excuse me, the cumulative distribution function and does least squares fitting, one gets numbers that are much better. 2.480, 2.37. Again, they're not, they're not accurate. The error bars on these are not within, do not uh, bracket the true value. But uh, it's, a, it's a lot better than this. Um, we can also do a least squares fitting with logarithmic bins. That's the non-standard bin size I was describing before. That also gives crummy results, very bad results, 1.5, 1.19. Again, the true value is 2.5. Um, if one does least squares fitting with a rank frequency plot, then one also gets, gets results that are decent, 2.57, 2.487. But again, the error bars on these do not bracket the true value. So I think the, the lesson from their paper to me is very, very clear. That um, the reliable way to estimate um, exponents for power laws is to use the maximum likelihood estimators. And that doing anything else, tempting as it may be, fitting a line through this, for instance, can give results that are um, badly off. OK, so that's the main take home from here. Oh, and I guess also the one other take home is that there are different formulas, different approaches for discrete and continuous, and you don't want to mix the two up. This is a case 
where um, that detail matters. So if you're fitting, uh, have some data, you want to fit it to a power law, use the MLE estimators. Um, there's code online to do it and be careful to not um, interchange discrete and continuous.